Peace. What's good? How y'all doing? Today is Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. I pray that this message reaches you all in the best of health, spirit, and mind. I'm doing very well. I wanted to um, do a video. I was going to do a, a shorter version of my most recent headline news episode, episode 62. And I'm still going to do that. Make sure my, my uh, frequency music in the background isn't too loud. Um, I'm still going to do that. I have uh, put together a group of slides, pulled some slides from the most recent episode, uh, ways to talk about what's going on without getting censored uh, and getting my another strike on my page or getting demonetized. Um, and so we'll get into that in just a minute. But before I do that, I wanted to have a brief not conversation. I just wanted to say a few things in terms of the magnitude of this moment and what's happening in the world. And um, when I did the episode, I felt compelled when I started out to just take a moment and collectively me with you, those of you who hear my voice, uh, to just stop and take a few moments and take a few breaths um, because there's a lot going on in the outer world and in the inner, inner world of all of us as well, the microcosm and the macrocosm is, is being extremely um, challenged in this moment. So let's just take a couple of minutes, not, not minutes, but breaths. Stop for a second, whatever you're doing. If you're driving, don't stop. <laughs> uh, or if you're multitasking, you don't have to stop, but just be mindful and present in the moment with me and with everyone else that ends up listening to this, um, taking a slow, deep breath in through the nose together. And then out through the mouth. And you can put your hand on your heart if you so feel inclined, taking a slow, deep breath in through the nose. and out through the mouth. And one last time, taking a slow, deep breath in through the nose, giving thanks and praise and gratitude for this moment and for each one of you. And then a slow, deep breath out, slow, deep breath, yeah, out <laughs> of the mouth. And again, gratitude for your presence, for your energy, for your life, for the essence of your being and for being here with me. And I, I feel a strong sense of urgency right now um, to have this conversation with you guys, uh, to do my part and to help, it, to help us as individuals and then in the collective consciousness um, not to get too overwhelmed by the magnitude of this moment, what's happening within ourselves and what's happening in the outer world. And I can tell you one thing for sure, that I know that the magnitude of what's happening in the outer world is a macrocosm of what's happening in the inner world, in the masses of humanity, uh, in the human consciousness. I made a few notes here, um, just within the last, let me see. Week, yeah, week, I'll say week. Just within the last week, yesterday, we had a Bank of America situation in terms of you know some issues with the digital system there. Just a reminder of how dangerous going fully digital is. Uh, if you know what happened with the um, uh, typhoon recently, and that was Japan, right? China or Japan, don't quote me on that. I should know that because I did a new report on it, but I have so much stuff sw swimming around in my brain, pause. <laughs> but there was a recent typhoon and nobody could do anything because they didn't have any cash and they needed to charge their cell phones to be able to operate and navigate in their environment. So Bank of America, the fire at the manufacturing uh, pool Coal producing production manufacturer factory, uh, which has caused a very dangerous situation out there in terms of the air quality uh, in Conyers, Georgia, um, Lebanon, Iran, 
Gaza, which Gaza, which has been ongoing. We're coming up on a one year anniversary now. The situation in North Carolina and Florida, not only the quote unquote hurricane, more on that later, um, but the, the remnants and the out outfall and uh, not outfall, but the outcome and the outcry and the damage and difficulty and the blind eye that all of your politicians are turning. It's fascinating to me that this could be happening right in our country. I mean, it happened in Hawaii. We didn't pay attention, but I was like, okay, maybe, you know, we're not paying attention because it's across the waters, right? It's not something that's affecting the average American head on. But the same thing that happened there, just in a different way, is happening in that area of uh, the United States. More on that later. Um, the whole Diddy situation, the press conference just had a couple of day, happened a couple of days ago. Now they're talking about 120 new, and these are civil cases, of course, 120 new cases, 25 of those are allegedly minors. And whether that's true about Diddy or not, and obviously this is a civil situation, so they're, they're painting a picture before they actually have, you know, the picture fully painted. <laughs> But they're painting it in front of us. Normally, you know, especially when it comes to a court of law, you have to prove the case and then, you know, guilty until proven or innocent until proven guilty. And mind you, this is not a I'm not uh, standing up for Diddy at all. <laughs> like let the dead bury the dead. And everything and anything that's out of alignment with the divine feminine is about to get taken off the set. It's real in the field out here. So. uh the bigger picture of what's going on with Diddy, right? They're normalizing the conversation, the glorification, the pain and suffering, the reality, the under, the dark world, underworld, the Hollywood aspect, the social media aspect, right? This this something that's you know beneath the surface of human consciousness, if you will, that we've all been swooping beneath the rug. They call it PDF files. That's I think that's the cold word to use on on social media so that the algorithm doesn't pick it up. So in this recent uh, uh, um, press conference that this attorney out of Texas did, where he's alleging that he has 120 uh, victims, 25 of those being minors and, you know, speaking graphically about what took place in that situation. No proof. No verification of any of this, no validation of any of this, but just saying it, right? And every time this is happened, something like this happens in the collective consciousness, there's mass triggering that takes place. Because again, this is the dirty beneath the surface conversation that nobody really wants to talk about. And we like to pretend like it's only happening in Hollywood, but it's ingrained in American culture, to be honest. I say that tongue in cheek because I don't want to be prophesizing that or you know projecting that but when the me too movement was happening and i saw all the hollywood actresses coming forward and talking about how difficult it was for them and uh, the crafts and couch and all that stuff and i was like yeah but none of you guys ever talk about the reality of what the children go through and you're women so you should be at the forefront of that and while there's a conversation happening about sex abuse Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. At that time, that's the perfect time to say. And by the way, and none of them did. So, in Toltec wisdom, uh, in the book The Four Agreements, um, it talks about the mitote or the noise of the mind, and we're reading that in my book club, right? That book in my book club right now. Uh, but the noise of the mind. And the Toltecs described the my Tote as a dream where many people are talking all at once, but no one understands each other. Noise, right? A condition of the human mind that prevents people from seeing who they truly are. That's why I've been emphasizing so much in my recent content, the authentic self. Who are you truly, really, at the core of your being? Because at some point, we are all going to have to confront that. And if we don't confront that at some point in our lives, then are we really living? A wall of fog that distorts people's perceptions of themselves. 
a fog formed by unexamined agreements people have made with themselves and others. So in this time now of spiritual warfare, seeking out your true authentic self, dealing with and confronting your true authentic fears, the, the battle, and this is a, a microcosm of the macrocosm again, because we're talking about the individual, right? And our ability to balance indulgence versus discipline. And then in the collective consciousness, our ability or inability to balance indulgence versus discipline, right? So what are we talking about in terms of Harvey Weinstein, Diddy, in terms of, you know, hip hop music, culture, in terms of, I say hip hop, rap, trap, drill, female rap consciousness, which is legalized prostitution on wax, in my opinion. I don't know why women and girls want to be like hoes nowadays. It just doesn't make any sense to me. We're talking about SEX crimes, right? We're talking about the lower nature and our inability to talk about the balance between indulgence and discipline. Everything is about indulgence. That's where Satan roams. I have the window open, so I don't know how loud it's going to pick up. There's a helicopter helicopter um, passing by. This is LA. <laughs> um, indulgence versus indiscipline. Indulgence versus discipline. And the lower nature being on 10 within the average person. And so that's what we're reflecting in the collective consciousness. So I gave the the metaphor when I did the walk in, um, where was I walking? I was walking in Beverly Hills. It was a walk with me. It's on my, on my YouTube channel. I called it Holiday Blues. But I was talking about in terms of my personal experience, in terms of my work with my clients, and in terms of my observation and study of what's happening in the collective consciousness right now, especially those of us that are striving to walk in truth and in the light, we're being forced to confront our lower nature. We're being forced to confront our fears. So in the metaphor that I gave where I was talking about video games, and I used Super Mario Brothers as an example. And we're in the video game of life right now. We're all in the in the Super Mario Brothers game as individuals. And in the first level, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult when you first start out, but it's not that difficult because they want you to learn the game and start getting good. So you hit the question mark, mushroom comes out, you get bigger, you get your coins, you jump into, you know, the little plant, you go down into the underworld. It's, it's pretty simple and you can get the hang of the game quickly. By the time you get to the final level, level 10, it's way more difficult to get from start the start the that particular level and then get all the way to the end. Right. Well, by the time you get to level 10, you have to re. Beat <laughs> or beat again. The simplest aspects of the game from level one to the most difficult aspects of the game to level 10. And then once you do that in level 10, you have to fight the big, whoever the big adversary is, whoever the dope, the hardest monster is. Right. And so it's hard enough to get to the monster, but then you got to defeat that final monster in order to win the game, that particular game. And then, of course, you go on to play another game. Hopefully, if you're striving to grow and to expand and to be better and to do better. Hopefully that's a, a conscientious thought and a consistent awareness and mindfulness that you have. Wherever you're suffering or dealing with shortcomings or you know self-sabotage working against yourself, okay, but are you waking up and trying every day and trying to be better and do better? So here we are, those of us striving to live in and walk in truth in the midst of all of this chaos and insanity, and we really just want to live in peace, and we really just want to connect to God and let the sun shine on our face without breathing in poison. Now we will look up in the sky and see consistent reminders of the devil all the time. And then the state of awareness it takes to look past that and still see God. Understanding what the ramifications of that are, if in and now we're seeing in full color what the ramifications of that are with this Hurricane Helen in 
North Carolina. But we should have seen it in Dubai too. And it's happening in Nepal right now. We've had consistent, crazy, weird storms in Texas, which have had mass impact on utilities and et cetera, et cetera. What are, where, are we paying attention? Is this, is this thing on? There needs to be a, an abundant sense of energy within the people of God, the chosen ones right now. And when I say the chosen ones, I'm, I'm acknowledging the chosen ones who choose themselves. And you can read about, you can read the book and talk about it and, 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 and you know, uh, have all these idealistic thoughts and create sermons and churches and mosques and institutions of learning and organizations, but are you choosing to do the inner work, to maintain a, a, a consistent mindfulness and frequency and energy, to be self-aware, to be cogniz cognizant of your mental and emotional and energetic footprint in the world? Are you mindful of adding value to every space? every condition, every circumstance, or are we responding to the world that these people have built, which is going down as I, get, as I, as I speak this message. So the, the institute, the pillars of institution, of culture, of, of, of programming, of uh, knowledge, of culture, of America, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Hollywood being one of its main sort of mechanisms. Yeah, look at what's happening. <laughs> I didn't talk about. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but in the episode, in the full episode, I talk about the the parallels of what's happening in Hollywood with the with the previous writer strike, with what happened in Hollywood over the last four years, with the change in the programming and television, and you know. Uh, apps and streaming versus the previous world of television and the ramifications and then you add artificial intelligence and all of these different levels and layers while sim simultaneously one of the their best and brightest so when i say there i mean the music industry diddy and all of the names that are attached to him and all of the pre the potential you know it's like the guy who did the lawyer who did the press conference and he's touting about how he's got all these big names and how they're going to do that how he's going to release this and release that like stop playing with people's minds He's going to say out loud, yeah, 25 children were involved and he forced the boy to do this. And like putting all this graphic sexual information out in a world of, of, of a very high number of people that have already been traumatically abused in one way or another. So but this is they want you to know that's the point. They want you with all the stuff that they're accusing him of, that they're dragging him in, in the mud for, that they're destroying his life and humiliating him for that he did or didn't do yeah they want you to know that that's what they do they want to normalize it this is a battle between good and evil this is a battle between the higher self and the lower self and i say that tongue in cheek because both have to exist in order for the human process to do what it needs to do <laughs> One's a great master and the other one is a terrible master. Or one's a great thing to master and the other thing is a terrible thing to be a servant of. Masculine and feminine. Right now, the, the when I say, you know, us, uh, uh, the children of God being challenged, the chosen ones being challenged, <laughs> the difficulty of the inner war, inner turmoil, you know, the, the, what it's taking to maintain frequency right now in the midst of all of this chaos and insanity and then still having to confront your lower self, still having to confront your, your inner child, still having to confront the lack of support and encouragement and appreciation from the world <laughs> for what it takes to walk a straight path in this insanity and chaos. It's becoming more and more difficult to maintain frequency. I, if, I, if you listen and what's more important than maintaining frequency? Male and female. 
the extreme polarities. That's the spiritual representation of what's happening with happening with Diddy right now. Yeah, everything that's out of alignment with the divine feminine, and that includes harm to children. <laughs> You repping women but won't stand up for children? How does that work? So when we talk about the divine feminine, it really encompasses all. Because the woman gives birth to man, woman, and child. Boy, girl, and etc. You get what I'm saying. So how are we going to have a culture that's at war with women and think that there's going to be equilibrium in the world? How are we going to have a culture... That's at war with men and think there's going to be equilibrium in the world. I'm so tired of the finger finger pointing. I wish we could just have a moratorium and men would only do podcasts and content and and conver have conversation and talk to one another and have focus groups and therapy sessions and retreats where they only focus on themselves and then women do the same. So we can stop pointing fingers and blaming and expressing life. Through our lack, through lack based consciousness. This is a war on consciousness. These people, the powers that used to be, I'm speaking that into existence. That list that I gave from Bank of America to, to, to Iran to Nepal. Okay. <laughs> the people at the top of the pyramid of Satan's world. They're hoarders of consciousness. People I say, follow the money. It's about the money. We're way, this is way bigger than just the money. This is spiritual warfare. So they're hoarders of consciousness. Yes, they get off on being able to drag and humiliate this man in front of the world. Not just, yes, because he's black, but then they do it to them. They do it to white people all the time. <laughs> they took Matthew Perry off the set. So we're in that phase again where we're moving beyond race-based consciousness. It's still relative in terms of the right now aspects of the way everything is playing out. But in terms of building the kingdom of God, which the, the chosen ones are supposed to already be focused on internally and externally. Emphasis on internally, because that's how you build a new world. In the mind's eye first, asking the questions. Figuring out, you know, the questions that need to be asked and then answering them. But you got to ask first before you can answer. Hoarders of consciousness. They hoard consciousness through social media, through television programming, through commercials, through their artists. So when we talk about Diddy and the, and the potential people, all of the people, the ripple effects of all of the people that have been damaged in his pathway and, and all of the people that damaged him, all things are being revealed. When we say this, the Cat Williams started this. No, 2020 started this. <laughs> Again, for those of us who've been paying attention, because a lot of people got revealed in 2020, moving 2020, 21, 2022. Yeah, all bets were off. We really started to see who was really walking in the truth and in the light, of light across all elements of, of culture, in religion, in politics, in education, mom and pops. Celebrities, famous people, poor people, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, Satan was tapping on everybody's door. That's the thing we don't, you know, while everybody's all invested in the salaciousness of this case right now, this is the macrocosm of the microcosm. Hoarders of consciousness, hoarders of wealth, hoarders of suffering. So we talk about the statistics of depression, the statistics of anxiety, the people, the, the condition of the minds and hearts of people of the of the masses, the mitote of the mind, inability to, to, to run and control and have autonomy and sovereignty over your own mind. The chosen ones choose themselves. There's not too many people among us that have the ability. And I'm going to say this. Let me let me remix. Let me remix that because I don't want to. We need to start being mindful and being focused and being conscientious about being 
100% focused on something or some things. Mental, spiritual, emotional, physical awareness, fortification. Those are things that can't be put off until we take that next vacation or until we our next birthday or until, no, these are right now things. Because the conditions in mind, the conditions of the minds and the hearts of the masses is intensifying. I would like to say on a day to day basis, but I really want to say hourly. My thoughts and prayers and heart go out to all of those people in North Carolina, in the mountains of that area, Tennessee, Florida, and what's happening there. I feel the exact exact same level of love and compassion and empathy as I felt for the people of Maui and Lahaina. The same thing that rolled out there is rolling out here. The stakes are high right now. The stakes are high right now. Now we can be intentional about the stakes being high in the fa- in favor of God, but that takes inner work. <laughs> Just quoting the scriptures is not enough. And what God's going to do when God does this, when God does that, you waiting on God and God is waiting on you. Now there's again, there are certain ones among us. We could say get activated. We could say be still. Both of those two things mean the same thing when you when you look at it from that balanced perspective, the balance of indulgence versus discipline, respecting the lower nature, knowing what it's capable of, knowing that it has a, a, a time and a place and a presence that's necessary for us to expand to higher states of consciousness. But the lower nature does not run the show. The lower nature does not draw, is not the driver. <laughs> and the higher self is the passenger. Shouldn't be anyway. But unfortunately, That's the conditions that we've been brought into and have been projected and enforced upon us. Lower nature is driving the seat, is driving the the car or steering the ship. So we don't know how to quiet the mind. We don't focus on meditation. We don't focus on quieting ourselves and making sure that we're taking proper care of ourselves and listening to our inner being and Being of service to ourselves the way that we're servi- of service to the world. I said male, female, and then organic versus synthetic. I'm going to get started and I'm going to go quickly, be quickly um, through some of these slides. But I, I just really want to emphasize right now. And I want my words to be careful because we're not here to magnify fear. We're here to magnify love. We're here to embody love. We're here to walk in the light and to be the representations of what God consciousness looks like. That's my goal. I don't know about you. It's actually been my goal my whole life. And I'm just, you know, I really like really realizing the magnitude of that. Especially during this time. I'm invested in your health and well-being. That's why I'm that's why I'm I'm talking to this computer screen right now. I'm invested in your family's health and well-being. That's right that's why I wrote a textbook for you and your family to <laughs> have knowledge of self and access to the type of books and academia and content that I didn't have access to and still had to go and find the knowledge on my own because it wasn't in the schools and it wasn't institution. It wasn't in the institutions. I'm invested in your spiritual and mental and emotional growth because I've gone through my own personal hell in the past year and a half and have questioned God in in probably every way imaginable and questioned myself in probably every way imaginable and recognize characteristics and traits and faults that I wanted to rid myself of and felt the cross was too heavy for me to carry and the burden of the continuity of the work that I've done for the past 15 years and the lack of reciprocity 
and the, the toll that it takes from trying to sound the alarm when people aren't paying attention and listening, not just people in the world, but in your own family, and people close to you and connected to you. It's a very, very heavy cross to carry. And yet here I am still trying to add value, still trying to speak life unto, to and through us. When I talk to you guys, I'm, I'm still, I'm talking to myself too. And I appreciate when you tag me and, you know, put up clips and stuff, because half the stuff I'm saying, I'm not even going to, I won't say I'm not going to remember it. It's just what it is, is what it is. <laughs> Truth always reigns supreme. Suffering and depression and anxiety and lack of creativity and lack of inspiration and, 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 and enthusiasm about life, the lack of love, not being properly loved. Yes, within 100%. And the, really, that's the goal for most of us throughout, you know, to, to find that self-love, learn how to cultivate and embody that. But when we don't have that self-love, it's usually because the people who were charged with our proper handling and care didn't properly love us, didn't have the tools, resources, etc. All those things apply. But still, the point is, many, if not most of us, have not been properly loved. Maybe in our family settings, maybe in relationship settings, maybe in disconnects with our children or our parents. So then we say, what's that? Well, okay, that's the problem. What's the solution? To learn how to embody and cultivate love. Find something to love, work, passion, career, children, being of service to the world, building something, creating something, writing something, expressing something, singing something, Adding value, adding value, adding value. Because it's a reciprocal relationship and experience, this universal dance that we got going on with God right now, creation. It's reciprocal. You expand, you create, you are expanded. And given the power to create more. So I'm invested. Well, so going back to what I was saying in terms of my own internal reflections, in terms of my own personal pain and, and suffering and, and, you know, having to address the lower nature of myself, my own personal darkness, the circumstances and difficulties of, of my upbringing and experiences and things like that. Yeah. Master teacher type university level class I've been through in this past year for sure. I got to go through the class. I have to, I have to sit through the class to be ordered to teach the class. Apparently. <laughs> I'm invested. This is, this is not a one man or one woman show. We're all on the Titanic. I, I'm, I'm going to stop saying that. I say it because it's relative, but you know, I just... I'm going to get into this episode. Um, headline news was Aza Ali episode 62. This is the uh, ongoing news segment highlighting local, national, and global events, particularly those being censored by mainstream media. Headline news airs with Zaza Ali exclusively on the ZazaAli.com membership channel. The full episode of this episode is three, three hours. Um, pardon me. And you can watch the full episode by signing up to my membership channel where you will have access to all headline news episodes, my walk with me episodes, a private community page, monthly group meditation, town hall talks. Our ne first one or our for next group meditation is October 6th. Our first official town hall talks conversation is on Friday, October the 11th. And our next book club is Sunday, October 19th. You have full access to all of my content. Um, and then if you just want to watch this video, the full video on demand, I will post a link to access all of that information as well as other videos that I have on demand. I am no longer going to be offering one-on-one -on -one consultations as of the end of 2024. It has been a, a beautiful 
experience for me to work with people all around the world. I do offer one-on-one consultations where you can just book a video or phone consultation with me and I can help you get clear or be a sounding board or, you know, embellish the concept and emphasize the concepts concept of consciousness creates reality as well as heart and mind synchronicity. So I have appointments left for the remainder of this year. I do about three, I have about three, uh, three days a week right now on my calendar available. Um, and then I'm going to take a couple of weeks off in November for my birthday. So if you want to speak to me, if you want to get my perspective and opinion on anything, now would be the time to do so because 2025 is about to be a whole different situation. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm prepping and preparing myself and have been preparing myself for some time now for that. If you're in my membership channel, you have access to book a consultation for 50% off. And again, it's the same calendar. Um, so if you want to do so between now and December, now would be the time to do so. So I've been showing, talking about this video, but I've also been showing it in different uh, videos that I've done recently. The gray cat and the black cat that you see on the left hand side, and you can see this guy is playing with this with this laser beam, trying to get the cats to focus on it. And so the black cat is completely engrossed in following this light. It's not paying attention to anything else. The gray cat sees the light. The gray cat sees the reaction of the other black cat. And then the gray cat also sees the person who is moving the light. Okay. So let's just watch this together again. He starts out, he's looking at it. Okay. I see this, but now I'm looking at the other cat and now I'm looking at you. What's really going on. Those are three different, I'll say states of consciousness happening in that one space. It's really just one, but just to make the point, paying attention to everything happening around him or her, but at the same time, the level of self-awareness. So when we talk about all this stuff that's going on and how Satan has become from, come from behind the curtain and is flaunting his power in this world over the people that he has dominion over, we need to be the gray cat. Resist the devil and he will flee you. So we, when we say resist the devil, he will flee you. That means going back to the point about fear and confronting fear and confronting our lower nature, because that's how he gets in. He meaning they, them, etc. That's the only time when those pronouns are appropriate to me. Same thing when we talk about God or the Elohim or Allah or the all in all or universal consciousness or the source or collective consciousness, or the divine mind, et cetera, et cetera, as above, so below. A double-minded man. So I've put this, I feel like I've talked about this publicly, but maybe not, uh, in previous episodes of Headline News, talking about the operating system, Mr. Bill. I don't even like saying his full name. And I want to try to re remix his last name, but I hates H A T E S comes to mind, but it doesn't have this is right. Je ne sais quoi. I need something that's a little bit more has some more oomph in it. I'll come up with something, you know. Bill Hellfire, son of Satan. How about that? I don't even want to say his name because also again the algorithm is listening and paying attention, and it's not some pencil neck on the other side of the computer. It's artificial intelligence. So he founded the. Microsoft Corporation co-founded the world's largest personal computer software company, created this concept of an operating system. So within the computer, you have an operating system, the internal, you know, whether it's iOS, Apple for iPhones, Android, um, you know, Windows, um, et cetera, et cetera. You have the user that utilizes the application software, the operating system and the hardware, right? That's all the, the, the internal and the physical aspects of the computer, including the hardware. Then you have the operating system of the physical aspect of the computer, your monitor, your printer, your mouse, your keyboard, your hard drive, your uh, different apps, right? This is also an operating system. So this is a metaphor or this is an example of the operating systems that we are embodying and that can we can either control and use as a way as a means of manifestation and self-mastery or that can be controlled 
And so the operating system on a, on a mental, spiritual, and emotional level, those things can't be quantified. It's, it's the internal as well as the internal body, right? But it's the, 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 the chi, the prana, the life force energy, right? The things that we can't see, feel, taste, or touch, right? The senses, even though the senses are the means of, of that, but you get what I'm saying. The internal aspects of who we are, conscious and subconscious mind, the ability to love, the ability to feel, right? Intuition, uh, uh, you know, the way that the, the, the mind works. Brain would be a part of the physical apparatus, but the mind, meaning intuition, meaning imagination, meaning, you know, that deeper level of mental connection, mental, emotional, spiritual connection that goes beyond just the physical aspect of us. And then we have the physical operating system, brain, right? You know, the, the apparatuses of the sensors, the, the, the ears, the mouth, right? The nose, um, the physical body, and then the internal physical body and lungs and et cetera, et cetera. So recognizing that being intentional, because a double-minded man is being, he has, he has his, his place or his role that he, that he is, is playing out in terms of the internal operating system and then the physical, and then the potential of somebody outside of him or of us controlling the physical operating system and the mental, emotional, and spiritual operating system, et cetera. So a double-minded man is being ruled by someone else as well as operating in the world under his own, the own sentiments of his, his consciousness. So is it a, is it a, is there potential for somebody else to be ruling and controlling your physical body? Not just the man, not just the elite rulers of the world, but some random chick you meet at the strip club that has a nice body. And now all of a sudden you find yourself, you know, after a few shots in a room with a stranger and you know nothing, nothing about this woman <laughs> taking nothing against, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the sexual relationship and connection between a man and a woman. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying those type of experiences are usual, do, you know, can result in a number of different tragedies, especially now, especially post 2021, Jim Jones juice, et cetera. There's a different level of warfare happening there. Now you either know that or you don't know that. If you don't know that, you are susceptible to somebody else controlling your physical and internal operating system. I don't want to get into the logistics of that because it's probably too much for the average person bandwidth. I'm not saying that to be cocky. That's not a flex to me. It's a, it's a very, you know, particular stress and strain for me that I can't just sit here and be real and tell you <laughs> what I really think is going on. So the sexual aspect, again, the lower nature, does sex only apply to the lower nature? Absolutely not. Is the lower nature reflection and expression of the of, of sexual energy prominent in this culture and civil, civilization? Absolutely. Look at the statistics of abortion. Look at the, the stats of single parent households, STDs. The, the, the transformation of the sexual relationship between men and women, what it, what it's, how it started and what it is now. And we can add how it started and what it is now. All of the, again, look at the Diddy situation. Look at the Weinstein situation. Look at the fact that there is women and girls walking the streets, selling their bodies in every major city in America right now. The SEX trafficking world. Yeah, it's a real thing. So who's controlling a woman's operating system when she's on the block? Selling her body and, and connecting and, and, and giving the essence of her physical self to a stranger and downloading his energy and his frequency at the same time. Yeah, that's the way it works. So that's the spiritual representation of what I talked about for brothers randomly just going and hooking up with these thoughts in these clubs or one night stand type situations. It's not just a good feeling for the moment. There is a 
download taking place. Again, the balance of indulgence and discipline. I've been talking about this for 15 years now and I've gotten so much flack, but now here God is forcing all of our hands. Especially if you single right now and you're not mindful and conscientious about being sexually disciplined in the midst of all of this mud. <laughs> you heard the female, the white female who was 22 bragging about the fact that she had 500 bodies. What? I know you're crazy. I don't need to know anything about you. I know you're not all there. Who's controlling your operating system? You could be in a low vibration relationship and somebody else controlling your op 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 operating system because you always jealous or you always angry or you're always in your lower nature or it's always mirroring your trauma, your tragedy, your triggering. Who's controlling the operating system? If you can't get up and walk around the block two or three or four times a week and your body is obese and, and, and turning against itself or you're not willing to do what it takes to take care of your physical body, who's controlling your operating system? So a double minded man, this is not this is out of my bounds. I'm not I'm, I'm seeking higher land, higher ground. <laughs> this is not an option for me. Is can we all say that collectively? Okay, so then that takes living with intention. Mental, spiritual, emotional, physical fortification. Not tomorrow, not next year, right now. There is something coming off of these phones. There is something coming off of these electronic devices that can trigger, alter and change your mood. There was a film a few years ago called Kingsman. And the concept of that was that Samuel L. Jackson's character wanted to save the world from climate change. And by doing, to do that, he basically set humanity at war with itself by releasing these free SIM cards that everybody could put in their phones. And when everyone had one, he pressed an activation switch and it got rid of people's ability to, be, to have any morality. And they were just fighting and killing and murdering each other, literally in the street. It, built, it basically amplified your anger instincts and your fight instincts, and people were just murdering each other. And the point of the, the, the concept was enough people would kill each other, only a chosen few would survive, and that would save the world from climate change, basically a modern-day idea of Noah's Ark. So frequency wars is a real thing. Cell phone, again, talking about a double-minded man. We're, we have different you know, experiences of consciousness now because social media is, is not a physical, tangible place. And yet it is, it is getting and experiencing and, and, and harnessing so much of the energy of the collective conscious now. Are we as present? as we are in our physical lives, as we are when we're on those cell phones, because we know when we're on Instagram as our full attention. Again, the concept of the double-minded man. And yes, if you feel super anxious, super depressed, or super you know, internally chaotic or conflicted right now, yes, the, the frequencies are having an impact. We're electromagnetic beings. I turned the volume on this video off because I it's going to be on YouTube, obviously, and I don't want my, uh, you know, them to uh, strike me for um, reposting this video. But we see what's going on right now in the episode, in the full episode on my website. I talked about uh, Albert Pike. I talked about his prediction for um, WW3, and I talked about his uh, reference in terms of that prediction to an all out um, WAR between Islam and Zionism. I'm spacing my words out intentionally, guys. So I was trying to navigate, you know, ears and eyes that aren't real ears and eyes, but the point is what are we really looking at here on this screen? They say they fired off this many missiles, rounds, et cetera, et cetera. Did they really? And then when we say they, who is they? 
just like October 7th, you know, of last year. If you haven't questioned that narrative, again, with the eyes to ear, hear, eyes to see, ears to hear, if you haven't questioned that narrative and, and everything that's happened since, <laughs> this has been unfolding for more than 20 years now. What are we looking at in the sky? Pay attention to what's happening in the sky. This is why spirit, this is why fasting is critical right now. And, and who is this video? Where is this video at? Hold on. Let me stop this. They they say in the in the in the uh uh in the news coverage that this is in Gaza, this video right here. Really where? Where are there people right now? I, I just really love to know. This is there's so much propaganda right now, happening right now. So again, because we talking about the chosen ones, right? That language has been solidified and used sufficiently for so long. So they have to create wars and create circumstances and situations to make you think that somebody else is mad because they're the chosen ones. But the chosen ones choose themselves. Being able to maintain a certain level. Now you see these alleged, uh, uh, you know, looks like a target is being hit. Okay, then show us the information on the ground. And I'd like to see two or three different angles because I don't trust anything anymore with AI and CGI. I don't trust any of it. I don't know what it is we're looking at. I don't believe anything these people say. And that doesn't mean I don't think people aren't getting hurt on the ground. It doesn't mean that I don't think that people aren't, you know, in a tangible way being affected. Is it a, is it a, is it a, a the, 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 the illusion of war? or real war, or a little bit of both, to further the mission. When I talk about lack versus abundance-based consciousness, this is a workbook that I wrote in 2018, Change Your Mind from Lack to Abundance. It is all about self-awareness, consciousness, about mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical elevation about understanding the concept of a master teacher and using the life experiences that we've had to get us to connect level ourselves. So this is one of my metaphysical workbooks. It's called Change Your Mind from Lack to Abundance. It has been very beneficial to a lot of people around the world and I'm very happy to have it available in physical copy paperback as well as the ebook version available on my website, zazaali.com. Ladies and gentlemen, order. Order. Let me just stop this because they made it seem like this was a flex. And I guess it's better to do something than nothing. This is the United States Nations Assembly was almost completely empty as Netanyahu took the stage to deliver his speech. This reminds me of the Los Angeles Clippers when Donald Sterling said all that racist stuff. He got caught on camera, all, you know, talking about the players and all of that. And then the players took off their jerseys and dropped their jerseys in the middle of the of the uh, uh, floor, the, the the court, and then walked off and then proceeded to play in the game like that was their stand and that was it. This reminds me of that. I mean, I guess, again, something is better than nothing, but you don't hear these people being, you know, uh, uh, emphatic about holding this position. They're not even saying anything. They're just walking out right? Walking out is one thing. Having a microphone and a camera in front of your face, putting it all on the line is a whole different ball game. And so again, these people are upping the ante, have upped the ante. And the same people that are, it, when we talk about Yemen, Syria, um, Iran, Iraq, etc., we think this is just something going on in the Middle East. No, this is directly connected to what's happening in, on the East Coast. With that weather anomaly, 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 hint, hint, or cough, cough. Same thing with Lahaina. Same thing with, was it Morocco or Turkey? I think it was Morocco. We had that major flooding and it completely wiped the whole city out. Same thing over there. Same thing in the same people in the Congo. On a, once again, we talking about the the pyramid of Satan. There's levels to it. <laughs> uh, 
God promised the Jewish people these lands, one half of modern day Egypt, all of Israel, Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Kuwait, and three fourths of Saudi Arabia. This is going to become a reality in the millennial reign when Jesus Christ rules the world from Jerusalem with a rod of iron. This is Israel right now. And this is what will happen whenever the Messiah comes back. He says like sooner or later this happens. So basically we are being told that we are going to be kicked out of our, of our land soon because God wants that. John Hagee is one of the biggest figures. He's invited to White House events. He's invited to U.S. embassy openings. Imagine a college kid on campus is saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. We're told that's genocide. This guy is proposing wiping out multiple countries in the Middle East. He's a favorite of the Republican Party. Yeah. And by the way, this is the most important point. He's an anti-Semite. They are pro-Israel, but they hate the Jews. The chosen ones choose themselves. And everywhere I stand is holy ground. This, this idea of human beings like fighting over one particular land or one particular land mass. There's so many energy vortexes. There's so many high vibrational, beautiful landscapes and beaches and, 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 and forests and rivers and lakes and mountainous regions. And every single region has an has a important position that it plays in stabilizing the planet. So when you go to forests, when you go to uh, places like Maui and Lahaina, right? When you go to places that are that are strong energy vortexes, it has a, the the forests and the trees, and the Amazon and the rainforests have a specific role to clean up the air and to produce high levels of oxygen and the the reciprocity relationship between human beings and all life forms and and what happens in that situation. In the beach areas, in the, the areas with high levels of water movement, you have the uh, high levels of uh, uh, ions in the atmosphere, right? You have the kinetic energy of the movement of the water. You have the life, plant life, the, the marine life, the animal life that is happening in the water that feeds humanity, that also feeds the ecosystem, right? You have the mountainous areas that in, in volcanoes, and you know the, the roles that they play in eruptions and earthquakes and creating new land masses and new landforms. I mean, what are we saying here? Fighting over one piece of land. Sedona is one of the most beautiful places in the world. You can't tell me that's not an energetic vortex. You can't tell me God is not there. Go to one of these beautiful Southern California beaches with palm trees and mountains in the backside. You can't, or Hawaii, you can't tell me God is not there. Go in the hood, in the concrete jungles, in the places where there aren't any trees and where there aren't any green life, and you see the beauty and the power and the essence in the, of, the, of the, those beings, of those powerful, beautiful people still holding on to faith, still holding on to God. You can't tell me God is not there. So everywhere I stand is holy ground. I'm watching these devils, these purveyors of evil and wickedness. I'm with Kat. Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. It's all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. PGJ, any of them. The, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, you know why they take it the wrong way. They got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the access and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. One million new Le Lebanese refugees, nonstop bombs are being dropped on Lebanon, a sovereign country, on densely popula populated neighborhoods targeting civilians. Meanwhile, the occupation is blatantly spreading misinformation about weapons being hidden in homes where civilians are used as human shields. As another old colonial pretext to bomb people with impunity. Meanwhile, in America, a 43 foot tall naked Trump marionette debuts in Las Vegas photos. 
made of foam over rebar and weighing approximately 6,000 pounds. The gigantic naked trunk will travel the United States as part of the Crooked and Obscene Tour. But first, you can see it in person and in the wild at 13460 Apex Harbor Lane in Vegas right now. Heard the tour's organizers portraying Trump in the nude is intentional, serving as a bold statement of transparency, vulnerability, and the public personas of political figures. They also aim to spark conversation about transparency or lack thereof in politics, challenging viewers to think critically about political influence, according to press materials. I mean, does anything serious in this country, you got this type of money where you can create this type of statue and then take it on the road. And, and But yet you see what's happening in North Carolina. I hope you're just as active with your repudiating Trump as you in, 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 in actually adding value and assisting real people on, on the ground. And so back to my point about the low vibrational nature of sexuality in this country. It's one thing to create a statue mocking him. What's with the emphasis on his on his anatomy. Why did you have to make that a focal point? It's weird. It's not even mentioning the rapists, the gang members, the drug dealers, the child predators, and the traffickers in women, in women, mostly women. Joe Biden became mentally impaired, Kamala, was born that way. Who was born that way? And if you think about it, only a mentally disabled person could have allowed this to happen to our country. Anybody would know this. They put two mediocre politicians up in front of the world and got you guys fighting over Two mediocre politicians. Again, the point is to dumb down the perception of America in the eyes of the world. Not only the the you know the impact on the economic uh, uh, infrastructure and all this other stuff that they have planned, but it's also about dumbing down the perception of Americans. And there's no better way to do that than the the alleged you know rulers in the highest land. So Kamala, Joe, Trump, all three. And you guys are fighting over which one is the best. It's insane. Yes, I, I get it. The, there's a political aspect to this. There's on the ground, boots on the ground type situation. But in terms of the level of importance in this day and time right now. Mind you, neither one of them have said it or done anything significant. All three of them, any significant to help those people on the East Coast. How? How is that possible? And at the same time, you're raising hundreds of millions of dollars on a daily basis consistently for your campaign. And there are people right now that are still sitting on rooftops of their homes or not able to get food and water. Make it make sense. Somebody, please. Financial Stockholm Syndrome, that American dream gone. Choice cuts for the rich while the middle get the bone. Lower class is lucky to even manifest a marrow. Can't keep your eyes on the prize when it's always on the sparrow. See, civil conversations come from speaking to civil people. That man don't have a plan, so his dance is to speak evil. We don't want to see the country burn. We want to see the country learn that love and integrity is what makes the world turn. Not fight. Moral behavior from a so called savior. They say they want to ban books and sense of history to protect children. But they don't want to ban the laws that allow children to get guns to shoot up buildings. They don't want to ban the guns that allow civilians to commit mass killings because they're more concerned with overturning the reproductive rights of women. At this point, I look at America and ask what's needed. It needs care, it needs comfort, it needs feeding. We need peace. We need growth. We need healing. We need women. We need trust. We need change. We need promise. We need someone in that office, to be honest. We need examples for our sisters and our daughters. We need family. Peace to Simba. I think he is a very, very, very dope and talented um, rapper and artist. I love the fact that he, you know, 
speaks on things that a lot of people won't. He's highly intelligent. I just, I, I loved everything about that poem until the very last word. Um, but I respect the fact that he's, you know, I don't know what role he's playing, what position, but it was just, it's just good to hear our brothers be eloquent and poetic and intelligent and in, in expressing their creativity, right? Um, he lost me with the Kamala thing at the end, but hey, to each his or her own. You say we need Kamala, I say we need God, we need self-awareness, we need sovereignty of mind, heart, and body. Um, there's a helicopter covering. <laughs> what I did like that he said though, and that he emphasized was that we need women because we do. And that's is a specific message for the brothers who are in alignment with their divine feminine to support us in that regard. But then to the women again, that are operating in their striving to operate in their higher self and their higher nature and, and, and be aligned with the frequency of God. The world needs guidance. The world needs nurturing. The world needs wisdom. The world needs love. These are all things that women are very capable of. So I love the fact that he emphasized that. Um, I wanted, I did, I was supposed to read this at the beginning and I totally forgot the total, some of the other topics that I talk about in the full episode. I'm just going to read this to you guys. Intelligence versus ignorance. Israel moves on Lebanon, Iran, and WW3. Zionism on steroids. 23 and Me board of directors step down. 43 foot Naked Trump statue, Mayor Eric Adams indicted in Gotham City, City. Should Knight, Diddy, and Jay Z, the Black Boulet gatekeepers, harnessing Black power, Hollywood going bust, climate change, and Hurricane Helen, H A A R P, and weather wars, East Coast dock workers strike, the hive mind, that and much more. So that's the list that I use to promote that particular episode. If you're interested in um, watching it on demand or joining my membership channel. The board's taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Even the liberal media was shocked Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners and illegal aliens. Every transgender inmate would have access. Kamala's for they, then. President Trump is for you. And Donald J. Trump approved this message. Now, this was from the 2019 uh, election. This video, it seems like it's something that's right now, but it's not. It's actually from the 2019 uh, election campaign. And it's not just something that was, uh, uh, you know, they were trying to push forward. It actually has been pushed forward and it was active during the Trump campaign as well as the Biden campaign. So there's a little bit of uh, not full disclosure in this ad by Donald Trump. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, do you see how clownish all this shit is? This is y'all queen. I don't, I don't, I don't care if she's black or not. This is Harris Waltz campaign kicks off HBU, HBCU homecoming tour to reach black voters. I just it is what it is. Keys to Womanhood is a metaphysics, metaphysics workbook that I created specifically for girls and women. It is what I titled What Every Young Lady and Woman Should Know. We talk about health. We talk about love. We talk about hygiene. We talk about the menstrual cycle. We talk about holistic ways of birth control. We talk about adding value, reputation, the power of the mind, the power of the heart, right? The importance of sisterhood and tribe. We talk about the chakras and energy systems. We talk about sexually transmitted diseases, social media, et cetera, et cetera. This book is also available in paperback and an ebook version. You can get information on that on my website as well. Keys to womanhood, what every young lady and woman should know. It's actually one of my most proudest um, things that I've created. And eventually I want to travel around this country and do a special uh, workshop and lecture for uh, young girls or teenagers, you know, 11, age 11 to like 21 or maybe, I don't know, 11 to 18, I should say. Um, and it'll be centered around the content that's found in that workbook. So you can get more information on that for your daughters, for your sisters, etc. 
uh, mothers um, at zazaali.com. And I'll also put the link in the description for all of my books. He did, he didn't do all this stuff by himself. He was just, uh, just being used as a black pawn. A guy named Michael Stimpton, who is the owner and operator of Club 11. Club 11 is literally up the street from P. Diddy's mansion on Star Island where he was running these freakout parties. So what would happen is P. Diddy would cure some of his victims at Club 11. And uh, uh, they would go there, they would drug the people, bring them back, and then they would basically assault them, videotape things, and uh, call them for blackmail or bribe them and stuff. People from China, people from Russia, whenever they go to the United States, they want to go to Club 11. Why? Because it's the hottest nightclub in the world. And why? Because P. Diddy, Drake, Travis Scott, uh, uh, all the, the hottest acts in the black community go there. But what's happening is that's a honey trap. Just like Jeffrey Epstein had his mansion in New York and his place in New Mexico and his yacht parties, those were the honey traps for the bankers, the Fortune 500 CEOs, and uh, the politicians. Well, now Club 11 once the fake news media actually starts doing its job and investigating, doing forensic accounting of what's going on, how a nightclub could spawn uh, uh, high-rise buildings and hotels within 10 years, that's just amazing. And that's the tip of the iceberg with this P. Diddy. What's happening is the Blacks who are desperate, I thought I was, I was desperate, but not everybody has that will. I'd rather be homeless and hungry than sell my soul. And these people are selling their soul. And now they're realizing that when you sell, your soul is a price to pay. Um, so let's be clear. I, I didn't like the way he said the blacks. You know, that's, you know, he would have had to clean that up if I were on the other end of the table. But take the best and leave the rest part, the, the rest, right? Um, so Big New Brzezinski said, you know, in, in modern in the modern era, you don't have to control a million people. All you have to do is just control one person. And through controlling that one person, you control a million people. And this is what they've been doing through the frequency and culture of rap music in particular, right? Black culture in particular is that they have been pushing poison. They've been pushing prostitution, robbery, uh, uh, R-A-P-E. Uh, I say R-A-P-E and in tongue in cheek, because that's I'll, we'll take that off the off the table. Even though there is some musicians that have done that, but take that off the table. Um, even though in this situation, actually, it's relative, because the whole point of controlling somebody like Diddy, having him being involved in all of this salacious activity, is embedding it in the culture and embedding it in the frequency of the music so to speak. So again, these are hoarders of consciousness and hoarders of energy. Well, you said, well, that doesn't make sense. You said that's a little too, you know, wooey for me, Zaza. Well, then how is it that with trap music, where that started in America, trap music, drill music that started in America, that was a thing that was specifically centered in the black community in America, has now billowed out into Africa and into the United Kingdom. And now you have rappers there dying the same way the rappers here are dying. And through the, we could say the expression of the music, we could say the gang culture there, we could say the violent culture there, et cetera, et cetera. But there's ripple effects that are happening. There's a spiritual and physical counterpart to everything. So when people say the Diddy situation is a distraction, yeah, on a spiritual, on a certain level, it is on a physical level, because they are putting this in front of us. The timeline of everything happening right now is not a coincidence. The image on the left is Diddy and Trump. Somebody put this post up and was basically making the, the correlation between the fact that Trump got convicted of all of these felonies. He's still running for president. Diddy is on trial and can't even get out of jail. So it's a it's a black white thing. Right. And on a certain level, that's relative and relevant. On another level, the coincidence of both of these things happening at the exact same time is not happenstance. The timelines was, yes, the distraction in terms of what happened recently with the United Nations General uh, uh, Assembly. Yes, a distraction from us really stopping and paying attention to that so-called storm that just hit the East Coast and what that really was. Yes, a distraction from paying attention to the extreme adversity and difficulty and, and, and tragedies that have happened around the world as a result of all of the people that took that Jim Jones juice 
and, and, and what it has done and is doing to them. Not everybody, but yes, a distraction from that. But on a spiritual level, when I talk about the, 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 you know, the, the, talking about God's side and then, you know, everybody else is over there, right? So that applies to Diddy being on the other side, but then it also applies to pimps. <laughs> female and male. I have to say that because now the females and the rappers want it. The rappers want to, the female rappers want to be pimps. Why would you want to be a pimp or a hoe in, 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 opposed to a goddess? I'll never understand. But, you know, to each, each his or her own. Or a freak or identify as a freak opposed to a scientist or a ma mathematician or a builder or an engineer or a poet or somebody who is, you know, world renowned for adding value to the culture. Oh, you just want to tell the world you're a freak. OK, go for it. The timeline. Again, they want you to know. Just like when everything was happening in Palestine and they were like, they're censoring people. Like, no, they're censoring some stuff. But they let all of the vicious imagery uh, let us to see what was really happening on the ground there. They, they showed us. They wanted us to see. They want us to know what the ditties of the world are capable of because they want you to know what they're capable of. It's party B with Michelle Laney at the Rick Owens show in 20, season 2025. What is she, what is this? What's this frequency? What's this energy? God side and the other side. Who is this chick? Again, you can control a million people by just controlling one. So the, the energy of the rituals and the sacrifices and the humiliation that take place are embedded in the music. This is Erica Badu with Marina Abramovich. And I've talked about this before. There's another video that I, I was going to put up, but I didn't. But here she is again with Jay-Z doing this weird. Now, why am I showing this? I'm sure you guys have probably, I probably have played this before. You can control a million people just by controlling one person and having them be focal points in the culture and in the collective consciousness. This lady is a spirit cooker. She is emphatic about her beliefs and about her work in the darker side and, you know, that, 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 all of that. Why are these high vibrational melanated beings in their own way? What is this? What's happening here? Why would all, why are all of the black celebrities hanging out with and, and paying homage to and showing so so much respect to this? What is the frequency of this? What is her frequency in correlation to Diddy's frequency? Have they ever partied together? What he's doing, the majority of the politicians, they you know they all you talk about honey trap. What's the point of the honey trap to get you caught up on camera doing something salacious? that you shouldn't have been doing. But the camera was just there without your knowledge, but you were still doing something salacious. <laughs> it's just on film. So people can do whatever they want in the privacy of their home, own homes, but when you start filming it and using it as leverage and to bribe people, so is this initiation for all of, you, all of your favorite rappers and singers and celebrities and actress, actors and actresses? Now that we see that they're all scared to come out and say anything about what's going on with Diddy, none of them are saying anything. And it's and it's it's super loud because they all have social media pages. It's not like 1990s where you know you had to somebody at People magazine had to come interview for interview you for the world to know what you thought. No, now you can just go on Twitter or X. And none of them have anything to say. So when we talk about billionaire versus hundred millionaire versus power, when I say none of them have anything to say, I you know fifty cent aside, of course, and a few here and there. But look at how much energy that black culture has poured into this culture, and look at what they're pouring into, and look at who's pouring into them. We found out that my trainer was a MK Ultra. 
Canadian uh, he intelligence. Was, uh, yeah. He worked in the defense research and uh, development uh, in the Canadian military, essentially working on psyops in the guy? Canadian military. This is Harley Pasternak. Yeah, what I'm saying is, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, whoa, was, he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Well, they would have Britney Spears, too. I mean, look at they they Michael Jackson. Oh, but only worse, yeah. So, yes, look, what, yes. what they did, look what they did to Brittany. When she went in, she was tired, she was exhausted, yeah. she was in a bad way. But 10 years of that medication wrecked her brain. You can see it now. Yeah. You can see there's not much of her left. So, the, the irony, what I just thought about as that was playing, was, you know, people calling Ye Yeezy, right? And, and the correlation to the God self, if you will. Um, and, you know, people mad at him because he said he was a god or whatever. But that's besides the point. The 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 name and the correlation of the concept of Yeezy, right? And then the the Sunday services and going across the country and trying to raise the vibration and then being one of the most outspoken, uh, you know, artists of probably any time, to be honest, in terms of the things that he said and 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 the chances that he took, and then still recognizing in 2024 with with what has happened to him because he's on a totally different you can't tell me he's on the path of light right now i can't say in his personal life in his music in his representation in his images and the things that he's talking about and focusing on he's not reflecting light back to us and yet he's still being referred to as easy and anything that he says and does right now will probably sell out but who is his god and I'm asking that that tongue in cheek because that's not for me to answer. Right. And it's not even about him personally. It's again about the frequency that's been happening in the music industry and now how they've been harnessing black energy, black culture, black consciousness for subversive purposes. So I'm with Kat. This is not about race. And if you worship a God that looks like this right here or somebody who represents this. Oh, don't judge. Yeah, I can make it. I, I'm pretty sure I can look at this image and see what I need to see. It's not something I want to be a part of. The timeline. What happened with Kanye? What's happening with Diddy? The way that Jay-Z's name is, is being thrown in everything now. They're, it's, they're using these people to, it's not just a distraction. It's a show. It's theater. It's a movie happening in real time. This is all this would be a Netflix bestseller if we were, you know, uh, number one, it'd be on Netflix for a whole year if it was an actual film, if the actors and actresses were good, of course. It's a it's a movie and a play happening at happening in full throttle right in front of our eyes. Yes, to keep you distracted, but also to keep you entertained. To keep you loving their way of life, to keep you intrigued and, 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 and curious and fascinated by the savage shit that's happening in this world behind the scenes. They want you to know. I actually think Oprah's going down next. Oprah is going down next, you all. She, Oprah's a handler. Um, a handler is a person that orchestrates political figures, entertainment, uh, athletic figures, and controls them so they don't step out of line for the pre-written scripting that they present to the public. So Oprah's part in this already started in the situation with Lahaina when she stood there next to The Rock and with her her brazen, super arrogant, unnecessarily, you know, bravado in that moment that shouldn't require anything other than compassion and empathy. You got all this land, you got all this money and all these people are here suffering and can't rebuild and don't have anything. And you're on your you have all this lush land. And then you, you, you do a quick photo op and, and a video to raise a little bit of money, knowing that the money's not going to do anything when they systematically, you know, created a system there where the people can't rebuild and can't revamp those, those places that they lived. 
and you can't say or do anything about it, and you and you're a billionaire. There, they've already started humiliating her. She lost all credibility with me after that. And yeah, I knew, you know, we've all known stuff about her over the years, but you know, she's also done good too, in a very pocketed, limited type of way. But still. talk about the war between organic and synthetic energy. We talk about the, the beings of darkness trying to find a way to harness the energy. Tupac in this whole situation in terms of Drake and the AI aspect. Of, I don't know if I ever talked about this on any of the YouTube videos I did in headline news, but it's relative in terms of this dance and this, I'll say war as a tongue in cheek statement, but this, the light and the darkness and the synthetic and the organic and how it's playing itself out, right? Because there has to be a host they're still harnessing the energy of Pop to this day. <clears throat> He's still a mainstream topic of conversation in the, in the collective consciousness around the world to this day because they don't create anything. They just harness the energy of the creators, of the, 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 the beacons of light. That's why so many podcasts and interviews that are happening and, and you know, the whole Diddy, how, how Pac is super intertwined with this whole Diddy situation. His frequency is still strong and alive in the collective consciousness. And they're parasitic by nature. AI is parasitic by nature. That's, that's, why would you say it's parasitic? Because it needs your data and your information and your mind and the way you think and the way you operate to learn. Kendrick Lamar to perform at 2025 Super Bowl halftime show. I'm happy for Kendrick. I love Kendrick. I feel like he is representing that light. I feel like he dusted off that Canadian in the most profound, beautiful, black, powerful, intelligent, spiritual way. Okay, so let's just be, be clear about that. Jay-Z works for those people, though. So every time I see his name, you know, it's like, oh, OK, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how this plays off. But this is another representation of that dark world, NFL, et cetera, the whole sports sports world, the role that it played 2020 moving forward, the role that it's still playing now, including what happened to DeMar Hamlin, which everybody seems to have forgotten about. I ain't never forgetting that shit. Not to mention the fact that on Bel Air, the show that Will Smith produces, they did a rendition of it and made it a part of the storyline in this last season. So yeah, I'm not ever letting that down, letting that go. Cause I know what really happened. There hasn't been a single hip hop album or song at the top of the billboard 200 or hot 100 all year. That's the first time that has happened for this long since 1993. That was in 2023. Fast forward to 2024. This is a quote from an uh, article, Rolling Stones, I think it was. Things only got worse for him, meaning Drake, as Lamar released the song of the year, Not Like Us, which debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and continues to break streaming records. It's a hit that could get an entire venue singing versus about how Drake is allegedly a PDF file. OK, so. And then you have Jay-Z as the master of ceremonies. I, I love the language. We know MC has one correlation, but then master of ceremonies in these people worlds means something different. So I'm going to be very intrigued to see how this plays out. But again, that light energy, this is what they do. They harness it. They hoard it. So Kendrick, this the 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 physical level, I'm like, I'm looking side at ways at Jay-Z. I don't know what the, you know what I mean, what the play is here. And I'm, but I'm also looking at Kendrick, like this is a wonderful thing for you to be getting this level of acknowledge this acknowledgement and this level of platform on your, in your, on your career path. Hopefully you'll be there representing the truth and living God. I have no reason to think otherwise. I just know the setting. So walk soft, but carry a big stick. Yeah, that's the sentiment. If you're from the South or you're from the hood, you know what that means. Walk soft, but carry a big stick because it's up. That's what Kat said, right? It's God's side and their side. 
plus 2025 Super Bowl. I mean, it's just I'm I'm I'm, I'm I hope that my urgency and my clarity and my convictions and the energy behind the words that I'm saying to you guys is really seeping in. The stakes are high right now. Ancient People <laughs> is a social studies and history textbook by Zaza Ali, a full color textbook, 349 pages. Um, Alchemy Publishing presents volume one of an ongoing series dedicated to the ancient peoples of this world. The first edition of Ancient People details the 700 year rulership of the Moors in Spain, as well as Queen Lili Ukulani and Hawaii's last monarchy. We dive into the ancient queens of Ethiopia and Kush, as well as Nubia in the south and their connection to Kemet, aka Egypt in the north, including the great Pharaoh Hepshetsit. Did Africans migrate to Asia or were the native Japanese and Chinese indigenous to their homelands? In this book, we cover extensively the Moors in Spain, Queen Lili Ukulani and Hawaii's last monarchy, Africans in Asia, the Kandakis of Ethiopia and Kush, Pharaoh Hepshetsit of the 18th dynasty and Kemet. This book is available in paperback and hardcover. It places emphasis on vocabulary, spelling, critical thinking, and more. There are more than 450 pages included in the book as well. And I am very, very happy and excited to have given this to the world. If you have already received your copy, if you tag me on social media in a post or a video, I have a gift for you guys. I'm going to do a separate video and talk about that, but I have gotten overwhelming um, love and positive feedback on this book. And if you're waiting for your book, I'm waiting on my second print run now because I am a small business owner and things <laughs> operate a little bit differently in my world. But thank you guys so much for your support. And I appreciate all of the um, positive feedback that I have gotten on this book. And when we talk about the timeline that we're in right now and the importance of mental sovereignty, right? And so I wrote this book for our children and for homeschooling parents, obviously, but it's also for high schools, middle schools, colleges. It is a labor of love that really taps into the ancient and indigenous cultures and civilizations around the world. Three of the chapters are, in, are focused on queens and the divine feminine energy. And then two chapters are focused on the warrior masculine energy. You can get more information in the description or go to my website, zazaali.com. Sorry, I got caught up in the, looking at the water. Um, in terms of this hurricane, I can't get too far into this because again, I don't want my page to get um, censored again. This image of the front page of The Economist magazine, which is dated from 2013, I've shown this to you guys and we've talked about this several times before. You can see the devil is very, very active in the details of this image. I have talked about, I've honed in on different aspects of this image because it's called a rough guide to hell for a reason. But the thing I want to hone in on right now is you can see that this devil right here, he's the big devil. He's holding the pitchfork. He's obviously physically, you know, larger than all of the other little little devils running around making mis mischief, right? Um, but he's obviously the head guy in charge. So we could call him Satan. We could call him Lucifer, you know, whatever top of the pyramid type vibes. Notice that he's holding a picture of this picture. So not only, you know, is he in the photo in terms of the physical manifestation of these things taking place, but he already had the photo. So it's like the past and the present and the future are all hap happening simultaneously in this image. So that plus, what is he standing next to? It's a machine. You can look this, th this cover up on your own. So right, readily available, the Economist uh, 20, December 2012 to uh, January 2013 article. Uh, or, or that particular magazine edition. He's standing next to a machine that says climate change that has physical levers. And then all of the, the, the imagery in the land will say that surrounding him looks dark and desolate. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to leave that at that. It's kind of underscoring the point that I want to make. 
So I show videos and other content in the full episode of this where I'm not don't have to worry about watching my steps. But one of the main headlines was here's how Hurricane Helen brought biblical dev devastation to Western North, North Carolina in a near worst case scenario. Notice the language. Um, so this storm and the the full the, the major damage of this storm happened somewhere between 400 and 500 uh, 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 miles all, away from the coast. Normally hurricanes pick up and have their biggest impact somewhere a lot closer to the coastal areas. So that's the first sort of red flag about this situation. The second one is they called it a category four, four hurricane, but it really was only a category four hurricane for probably a few hours in a very small area within the, the eye of the storm, so to speak. Most of the damage that happened from this storm came from rain and flooding. Ironically, just like Hurricane Katrina. So if you want to get more context on that, you can watch the full episode. The highest level of rainfall happened in Busick. I believe that's the county, 31.3, uh, a three-day total of 31.33 inches. Notice the numbers there, but not just that. It wasn't three days. It was really more so like two days that they parked all of this water over these certain areas. And the water is what did all the damage. But they're, they're constantly saying hurricane, hurricane, hurricane. But you will notice, because I looked at a lot of footage when I was preparing for this news episode, just like previous storms, there wasn't a lot of real major powerful winds, hurricane, actual, you know, uh, uh, the fullness of what the hurricane looks like when it, when it's at its highest peak. There's not really a lot of footage of that, of, of this storm online. I wonder why. And then not only that, the way that the media is covering this, like we, you, like Kat said, you do know I have eyes. I can see you, right? When he did the, uh, he was talking about the Diddy party and he said that, um, uh, You'll be in a meeting and somebody will just bust out some cocaine and just start snorting the snorting cocaine. He's like, you do know I can see you, right? Like CNN, MSNBC, mainstream news, White House, federal, local, national government, politicians, all black, white, Asian, everything. Uh, uh, Supreme Court, House of Representatives, Senate, judicial, all branches of government. All people with pl with prominent platforms, all celebrities, all people that could say something that's not saying something. You do know we can see you, right? You do know that there's still cities and, and towns in right here in America that are literally covered with water, right? Okay, so going back to my point, they want you to know. They want us to know how much they don't care. The beautiful thing is that the the human ingenuity, seeing people that have like private helicopters, like, OK, we're not waiting on the government going out and trying to rescue people, even though they're trying to stop them now. People going out and, you know, I've seen so many videos of just regular people like stepping their game up and doing going out and helping random strangers. This is what we're all going to be tasked and called to do in the coming days. But that's a sovereign mind. I'm not waiting for you to do anything that I could be doing myself. When I tell y'all I'm super frustrated at the moment, is not a lie. You know, for the past 48 hours, I had planned to go to East Tennessee, you know, Irwin, Newport, and all that tomorrow. And for the last 48 hours, I've also been on the phone with EMA operational people, you know, trying to see who may need my thermal drone most and whoever I could assist better. You know, <laughs> and then I get a phone call and an email where we're being told to stand down. I've also spoken to rescue crews that are there right now, you know, and it's one thing I'll say about social media. Most people know, and the, somebody knows somebody and they see somebody. I've had emails where I've had a woman named Laura ask for help. Her brother got swept away. They have a video of him being swept away and she's just asking for help to get him. And yet we're being told to stand down. I have heard from people, Danielle and Alex, no offense to y'all. I've heard from these two people about how, he went to take generators and supplies there. And he was turned down. The water, food, stuff like that turned down. Why? You have people that really need things. And I get it. It's such a disarray. I understand this was all so fast. But at the end of the day, man, putting a halt to everything while there's people's lives at stake that are sitting out there somewhere that don't have anything, that may be trapped, may be hurt. 
and you're asking people to stand down that have the capabilities to help somebody. Okay, this is exactly what happened in Lahaina. And it's also what happened in Katrina. It's also happened in other places. But I'm just saying, you know, I, I when we talk about this being beyond race-based consciousness, like I, I'm, it makes me feel good um, and it, it, it lessens the burden, so to speak, to see that there are still other people in the world that care, that get activated when they see other people going through difficulties and struggling, right? And again, I, what really made me pay attention to this story is how much the media was not paying attention to it. Because I had knew about the, 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 the storm, but it didn't really catch my eye until like late Monday. It was one of the reasons why I, when I found out about it, I had to go back and like refocus my whole headline news episode because wait a minute, what is this? How is this not mainstream conversation? Full cities have been wiped out? What? The National Guard isn't like, what's, what's really going on here? While the media is practically radio science over hell and it continues to claim that only 100 people have died and 600 are missing, reports coming in from the ground are very different. I'm not going to read all of that because I'm just saying this is the same thing that happened in line. And when at first it was like, there's 2000 children missing and then we didn't hear anything else about it. Like spiritual discernment, mental, emotional discernment, being radiating love, being kind, being compassion, compassion is stepping our game up in those areas. It's mandatory right now. This is sickening. Not to mention the fact that we all pay taxes for when things like this happen for the government to get active. So it's not even, you know, it's the, yeah, we need to be at arming ourselves with information, with resources, et cetera, 100 percent. But like also, bro, you take you take money out of my you taxing me for everything. Doc workers situation, obviously we've, uh, we've passed the point where the strike has happened now. B uh, uh, Biden had the power to pause the potential strike. I think it was for 90 days. He didn't. He said he wanted to stay out of it and let the union do what was in their best interest. This happening at the same time that the situation in Conyers happens and like our government just not taking any real initiative about making these things happen. Why does this is what's so frustrating to me. There's a real on the ground emergency right now. OK, Trump's not in office, but Trump has half the country that's in his in his in his good graces. Why can't he activate and do outside of the scope of being the president and say, OK, guys, we got a problem here. Here's what we're going to do. I've set up a team. We have these people doing this manufacturing food, shelter, et cetera, et cetera. Why do you have to be in office to 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 use your prominence in your in your in your bully pulpit and your platforms to move the needle forward because if we can raise 500 million or a billion dollars for election campaigns but we can't act to activate that in energy and that intention to help those people in America make it make sense for me somebody please everything is being amplified during the quickening which is the dimensional vibratory increase. The smart are becoming brilliant and the dumb are becoming exponentially ignorant. Mental, spiritual, emotional, physical fortification. Dealing with our lower nature, looking closely and in depth at our, at our, our, our faults and things about our personality or our awareness that we wanna clean up, being a better friend, being a better parent, being a better lover, being a better partner, being a better contributor to society, adding value, caring about your energetic blueprint, footprint, the way you affect people, the way you operate in the world, adding value opposed to taking energy, being a, a, a beacon of consciousness and light instead of an energy vampire. Satan's doing it at the top of the pyramid and then you got the little people in your everyday life Agent Smith coming in and out of the, you know, a revolving door of Agent Smith's sucking your life force energy paws, bleeding you dry, keeping you stuck in a, in a system and in a, in a, in a, in a, in a 
on a hamster wheel of suffering. No, we're not doing that anymore. So being intentional about love, intentional about connecting with like-minded people, mindful and self-aware about our energy and vibration, the way we're affecting people. We talk about love. We, 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 we write books about love. But are we radiating and embodying love? Are we leaving people better than we found them? Are we leaving environments better than we found them? The grid stabilizers, the energy stabilizers. You guys are my tribe. I hope you hear me, but I also hope you feel me. We need to fortify ourselves so that we have the courage and conviction to stand up to the requirements that this time has imposed upon us. ZazaAli.com is my website. Info at ZazaAli.com is my direct email address. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. You can go get all that information um, from my website or I'll put the links in the description for consultations, for books, for connection, all of that good stuff. I appreciate you guys so much for your time, your energy, your attention, for supporting me. It's crazy times, but we are definitely going to be all right. All right. I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love.